Please describe 213. 213 is a photograph of the axe that I collected from the garage. This red staining is consistent in appearance with that of blood. Uh, there's also some dark staining on the metal uh, portion of the axe head itself. A bloody axe. I mean, it goes from bad to worse in this trial. This is gruesome stuff. You're talking about a man accused of murdering his parents and then dismembering them. Was it the axe? Was it that axe that he used to do that to his own parents inside their home? And why am I saying inside the home? Well, we'll take a listen to what they found in the fireplace. Exhibit 239 is a photograph, it's a close-up photograph of the two logs that are situated in the grate. And we also can see the unburnt newsprint. If we look in the center of the image, we see a dark colored object that is burnt wood that has been placed on top of the unburnt newsprint. And if we look closer to the black burnt charred wood, there is a white object on that piece of wood. That white object is later determined to be human bone. And that determination was made by um, the forensic anthropologist? Yes, Dr. Christina Figueroa Soto. Looking at the wood, the newspaper, the bone, um, did you guys look at the date at all on that newspaper? We did, and we photographed the dates of all of those. I cannot recall what those dates are. All right. Human bones in the fireplace, a bloody axe. Uh, this is... Let's bring in Court TV legal correspondent Chanley Painter joining us live tonight from uh, Madison, Wisconsin, where all this is taking place. Chanley, um, this is a, a gruesome case. Uh, we knew that going in, and now the jury is getting to see all of this. Uh, go through some of this physical evidence that this jury is hearing about. A lot of physical evidence before the jury all day long, Vinny. There's various crime scenes here, multiple crime scenes. We have the Halderson home, the fireplace you just showed. You have the remote farm property where the remains, the torso of Bart Halderson discovered. Well, the jury today seeing the alleged murder weapon just yards from that torso in a barn on that remote property. Prosecutors say that is the weapon used to shoot the Haldersons before their son allegedly dismembered them and scattered their remains. In addition to not only the jury seeing this rifle presented to them today in, in the court, they also learned later in the afternoon, Vinny, there were three magazines to a rifle located, actually hidden, in the walls of the basement of the Halderson home. The detectives walked the jury through how they uncovered these magazines. One of the magazines was missing five rounds of ammunition and these rounds of ammunition consistent with some fragments they found in the basement, consistent with the get well note that the defendant gave his brother. His brother testified to last week and said get well soon with a bullet. It's consistent with the ammunition found in the wall, Vinny. But I think one of the biggest moments of the day had to do with the prosecution detailing for the jury how they uncovered the cell phones of the victims because it directly contradicts the defendant's story. Let's watch. And deputy, do you continue to unwrap this evidentiary president? present? I continue to unwrap it, correct. Mm -hmm. And what is Exhibit 350 display? Uh, so what we see here, we can still see the foil sheet. We can still see the paper towel sheet. Um, we can see now um, Bart Helderson's Wisconsin issued um, photo driver's license. And we can see the Apple uh, iPhone that is located underneath the driver's license. What is 351 display? So 351, um, is the uh, the top phone, the black phone that we saw in the last picture. It is now 
uh, along with the driver's license, simply just turned over. Um, and we can see Krista's uh, Wisconsin uh, driver's license and an additional phone. So both phones and driver's license were wrapped together in the same packaging? Correct. So, Vinny, the phones found in the garage, not where the defendant said his parents were, which was three hours away at the lake cabin where they allegedly texted him. So that didn't add up. And the afternoon ended with some big moments of blood evidence found in the Halderson's home. There was a forensic expert who took the stand late this afternoon and talked about how they sprayed luminol on the basement, the foyer, and it lit up like Christmas, indicating blood or bleach or a cleanup in those key parts of the home. Yeah, this is, how about the, the jury reacting to some of this stuff? Uh, how are they taking it? You know, they, if there we go, we can see it lit up right there. Unbelievable. Um, how, is, how is the jury handling all this? Because this is not an easy case. It's not an easy case. Their face are covered with masks, but what I can glean, they're paying attention, a lot of notes being taken, and I, I don't see the typical afternoon lull where some jurors may check out or not pay attention to an expert. It's such a visual prosecution case, Vinny. They are looking at the screen. They are taking in the evidence uh, bravely at times. Now, the defendant, he's like a statue. He's not even moving, sitting there at the defense counsel table. In the gallery, I just want to mention his uncle, Brett Halderson in the courtroom throughout the day watching testimony. He testified last week, very emotionally so. Chanley Painter in Madison, Wisconsin. Going to be a big week out there. Thanks so much, Chanley. Appreciate it. Let's Thanks bring so back much. in the think tank. Teresa Jean-Pierre Coy, Jennifer Brandt, Philip Dubé. Uh, Jennifer, it seems to me this is turning out to be, uh, yes, it's, it's, it's gruesome and it's some, some difficult evidence, but one of the greatest circumstantial cases ever here uh, on Court TV. I agree, and I, but I do think the prosecution is doing a great job of sort of laying out the elements of the case, tying it all together, showing it in sort of a story fashion, making it very easy for everyone to understand and to draw all the lines, connect all the dots, draw all the lines together. Um, you know, it, the evidence just seems to be somewhat overwhelming. Philip, do you hear all the, all the, if you listen closely, I think you can hear the, the steps of, of, of the march towards a conviction. If you listen really closely inside that courtroom, you'll hear them with each piece of evidence that's coming in here. Uh, do you see anything differently? Oh, no. This is death by a thousand paper cuts, Vinny. Seriously. I need to hear something weird, like, you know, that Krista, who is supposed to be, you know, Earth Mother, and Bart, the father, is supposed to be, you know, Sky Father, that they were, you know, cultists, swinger, swapper types, and I'm just not hearing it. And I got to tell you, Vinny, I hope I don't get any hate mail. This is exactly why I don't have children, frankly. You know, I mean, these parents probably never thought in a million years that they would have to keep an eye open when they go to bed at night. It's just a tragedy. It's yeah. awful. It, it, uh, it, Teresa, I, I look at this case and, and I'm trying to figure out, you know, why would he do it? Well, it's because he, he was a liar. He, he was a liar. He's pretending to work, pretending to go to school. Doing, he's Who fooling his it? girlfriend. I'm sure he's fooling his parents. And, and at some point, you have to grow up, and he just never grew up. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree, but I still think, I mean, the, the, the one thing the prosecution is lacking is a motive. I mean, you could be a liar, but not a, you know, a killer that dismembers your parents. Um, but I think even, with, even without a... Um, um, a motive. I think this is like, you know, my colleagues have said, this is definitely going to be a conviction. I mean, there's just overwhelming evidence. I mean, it's just a gruesome, gruesome crime. Gruesome. And, and I think what we're getting the picture, uh, Jennifer, and, and there's, you know, it's difficult that, that we're, there, there's a reason why prosecutors don't have to prove a motive because sometimes it's difficult to get inside the head of someone that is this sick. And this demented, right. because whatever whatever's making them do that wouldn't make sense anyway. But what I'm what I'm seeing developed though is a kid that you know never never made it. He never you know right. he's got delusions of grandeur, and he's spending too much time inside. And and all of a sudden, uh, his parents are, are are probably pushing his button, saying, "Hey, you got right. you got to get up. You got to do something. Do something yeah, with your life." 
That's what I was going to say, Vinny. I mean, obviously, we're missing the parents. We can't hear the circumstances of what happened or, you know, why he, he did what he did or how long he might have planned it or any of that. I mean, it's just, were they on his case? Were they telling him to go get a job? Were they telling him, you know, you got to get together with your life and he didn't like it? Who knows? We'll never know that, Vinny. But it just seems that it's, it's a tragic situation. These poor people, they bring this child into the world and then, you know, he turns around and, and kills them in such a gruesome fashion. It's just, it's very troubling, I agree. But he's obviously a sick person to, to do that kind of thing. Yeah, and everyone talks about the nature, nurture. I mean, to me, this is the evidence of, of, of the nature. I mean, he's just wired differently. His brother came in, testified for the prosecution. He's living a somewhat normal life. We've seen other cases like Grant Amato, another one. Uh, brother, very, very, two brothers that were very, very normal, very well, you know, they, they lived and their even lives. The way he's, I don't he's get acting it. during just, the trial. Yeah. yeah, he's he's sitting there stoically. He's not showing any emotion. Nothing. I mean, obviously, he's just, you know, cold, he is what cold he is. hearted all But around. we'll see. They've got to prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. I know that, Teresa, beyond a reasonable doubt. We'll continue to watch.